How are you? I am well. We have an Apple event less than a week away, and I'm not so sure that we knew that a week ago. I mean, we, we were... Th- we were expecting th- hardware a week ago. Yeah, we were thinking maybe like the iPad Air thing. Yeah, I thought before. we'd be coming on this show to talk about some Touch ID power buttons, but... Y- yeah, I mean, we still could if you want to. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we've got the... It, it, the tagline is Time Flies. The event is on Tuesday, September 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, it's from Apple Park in Cupertino. It's going to be uh, a streamed event. Not, it, it, it's probably going to be in the style of WWDC, Apple's developer conference, where it's a yeah, pre-recorded, production. obviously. Yeah, um, because there's there's no there's there's no travel right now in terms of having a big populated event like that. So, all right, we've we've got that to look forward to. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll obviously be talking about the event stuff later. In yeah, and, and just a little bit, and, and so so there's uh, it's it's not so obvious <laughs> what happens there. Um, first up, we'll talk about some Apple Store stuff. So our colleague Michael Steber at Nine to Five Mac has an excellent um, has excellent coverage of this new Apple Marina Bay Sand Store, which we don't often talk about retail stores, but this one caught your eye. Uh, I think mostly visually <laughs> because of how it looks, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, it's cool, right? Like, yes, yeah. I don't think we've spoken about like the design of individual stores on Happy Hour in a long time, but because most of them are like they're all really nice, but they they generally look the same, right? They're big glass windows, and then you have nice interiors. This one's so cool; it floats on the sea. Like, <laughs> it's literally like an orb. It's like a lantern. Sits... Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Exactly, like a jack o' lantern that's just laying on the water, and you go into it through this like underground escalator that you walk through a bit and they have some they have like what you'd consider like a, a classic kind of big mall store inside like a, an underground so you walk past like rows of apple watches and stuff but then you go in these like escalators and you come out and you're in the orb you're literally like in the middle of the in the middle of the river and the I don't know. This store is so cool. I want to go to Singapore just to go to. It. It's about, I've never been like that enamored by a store before. This one looks so good. Like the even the Fifth Avenue store, like it's a cube and glass right in the middle, and then you go right. underneath and it's underneath. But this is in the middle of the sea, like or it's, you know it's in the middle of the river. Like come on, yeah. and the, they have like blinds on, but it's not real blinds. They're like they're kind of like blinds, but they're not, and they they like tilt through the day so they can direct the light inside the store. Like that, it's awesome. <laughs> it's it's a very nice looking store and it's got the city of singapore in the background so you've got that like sky yeah that's all right to contrast with it so yeah um, singapore's all right yeah. <laughs> they should have it on the thames like give me a british store that just like sits out there like. uh, i mean i live on the gulf coast we have plenty of room for, for stores that would look like this and uh <laughs> it's a cool but it was kind of funny because in the lead up to this store obviously launching they had the um wrap on it so they had like multicolor wrap and people originally some people thought that that was the that was the look of the store, like it was going to look like plasticky forever. But it's just like the Fifth Avenue store; they took down the, you know, the multicoloredness uh, when the thing finishes, and now you just got this like beautiful glass orb that just like sits on the water, <laughs> and you have nice little like sort of like wooden or metal blinds that can tilt in and out, and they have like you know the big open ceiling basically, so the light just shines straight through. Yeah, it's this is good audio talking about this store. Is I mean, I'm looking at the pictures, but. <laughs> <laughs> go if, so if you haven't seen it yet then go look at the store uh at the story that, that michael Sieber put together because he has some really cool pictures um you know he's got this whole network of, of, of readers uh around the world who help him cover apple store news and so he's got some really cool firsthand pictures that people shared with him um and this is something yeah i saw i saw like this, this is one of those stories where just opening uh, was kind of a story on Twitter where people were like really excited about it, and it kind of contrasts with right now in the U.S. where not really many stores open. <laughs> we're we're going to have an iPhone, uh, or we're going to have an Apple event without many stores open. We're going to have some kind of a launch without many stores open, um, and I, it, is, it is perfectly reasonable to expect that we have an iPhone launch in October without stores open. Yeah, um, there's no there's no change on the horizon there on that on that right. axis, um, and. You know, so, someone asked me about that. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of easy to imagine what happens. It's just, you know, it's all online and <laughs> in deliveries and stuff. So, um, and because you, you don't want to have those big queues around the stores. Um, yeah. And I mean, like pre uh, DJ O'Brien coming on to the show uh, or onto the scene as, <laughs> you know, head of Apple retail and, and people, Apple was kind of downplaying the whole queuing stuff, right? Like they were constantly trying to just shove people online 
before any of the pandemic stuff happened. They just they, I, like uh, Angela um, Arons, yeah. Arons, yeah. She, I think she saw the the lines and the cues as a bit like tacky and stuff. So she was trying to d- downplay it, and that's why they pushed so much onto the app and pre-registering. And if you are going to pick up, it was you know you get your time slot and you come and pick up and you leave. You don't queue around the block for like five hours in the morning. Yeah. But I, I, what we what we heard uh, when O'Brien took over, you know, the start of the year is that. Um, she kind of wanted to bring some of that back, like the frenzy of queuing. Like that was uh, in a Bloomberg report, is that she wanted some, she wanted to bring back some of the liveliness of the lines. Uh, and because of what happened in the world, they, you know, they've had to delay those plans. Not but this year, yeah, yeah, not this year. But you know, in in the fullness of time, maybe we'll go back to a time when they are, you know, they're they're kind of encouraging the queues, whereas previously they were like downplaying. And obviously, at the moment, you know, you 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 can't queue up just to buy stuff. You have to. You 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 come in for for appointments and wearing masks and stuff, um, or you can you know browse around, but they they want you to just buy stuff and send it to your house and get it shipped to your door. Yeah, that's the, that's the same way with, with this new Singapore store, the Mar- uh, Marina Bay Sands, is that if you want to go and visit, uh, book a time. So they're not totally out of the out of the woods yet there either. Um, and, and speaking of that, like underlying issue, this week Apple has a. Is it in-house design? It's it's a face Correct. mask that employees are you that that are, will be able to use or so. What's the story there? Yeah, like so, I don't know if you remember, but in April, uh, Apple announced they designed those face shields for medical health institutions and 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 individuals, and they were like, you know, things that they could produce relatively quickly at mass scale uh, in the height of the you know the lockdowns and the and the spread of the virus. And so Apple designed these like face shield things that they then shipped out around the world for free they like donated them as well as uh, their supplies of n95 masks that they just hadn't uh, had around the shop but uh fast forward a few months and the apple design team have now designed masks uh custom made just for their own corporate employees and their own retail employees so they uh bloomberg had the story they announced that the apple face mask is going to start shipping to employees within the next two weeks and of course it's apple so it's got these like you know, it's not just a common guard mask. There's some nice design to it, and it looks different to to the uh, to the normal, you know, kind of cloth masks you see. And Apple said that they would carefully source the materials so that the the uh, supply chain for their like special mask here don't disrupt what they need for PPE for you know like actual nurses and doctors and stuff. So the the materials that make the equipment that um, you know actually saves people's lives in hospitals uh, isn't going to be disrupted by what Apple's doing. Because I don't think that the mask that they made here, like the quote Apple face mask, is going to be uh, donated elsewhere. It's just for corporate and retail use. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, and it's got like multiple layers and it's all clever. And they also partnered with another company on a clear mask, which is uh, FDA approved uh, for surgical, you know, resistance to dust particles. Uh, but it's completely transparent. So it's meant for if you're a... Uh, you know, if you're a deaf or hard of hearing, you can still see the other person's the other person's mouth and like lip read mm-hmm. what they're saying. So if you go into a store and they realize that you know you've got some accessibility needs, they can put on a clear mask instead and still have a you know more uh, intimate conversation with you than trying to you know lip read when you've got a, an opaque mask on. So it's you know it's classic Apple fashion, right? They're the biggest company in the world. They have so much money and so many resources, and they deploy them in these ways. Like whether it's you know a pretty store floating in the middle of the sea or you know, just the fact that they can, they have the opportunity to design their own face masks, you know, made by the same people that design the iPhone and iPads. They're now designing and manufacturing completely in-house their own brand and, and designs of face masks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, let's take a break there for a moment. Sure. Uh, we are sponsored this week by Pillow. Getting a good night's sleep is underrated, but with a little help, it can be life-changing. Pillow is an all-in-one sleep tracking solution to help you be more aware of your sleep patterns and discover what might be affecting your sleep quality. If you have an Apple Watch, tracking your sleep is as easy as wearing it to bed. Pillow will track and analyze your sleep automatically. One of Pillow's most loved features is the ability to get a detailed heart rate diagram of every sleep session. Compare your sleep quality with other metrics like your weight or caffeine consumption and discover how they might be affecting how you sleep. Enable recording and Pillow will save the sounds that you make during sleep. So if you've got sleep apnea, just snoring or random unexpected noises during the night, you can record them and listen to them later. And a lot of users have been surprised by the results. Pillow is very privacy minded. All of your sleep and audio data is encrypted and stored on your own device 
And when it's syncing to iCloud, it's using end-to-end -end encryption. Pillow doesn't have user accounts, so it's all anonymous, and it doesn't collect or send your personal data anywhere else. Naps boost your focus, creativity, and well-being. If you're working from home, you can take naps using Pillow's power nap modes. And if you need an alarm to wake up with, Pillow can use your iPhone, Apple Watch, or iPad. If you've got WatchOS 6 installed in your watch, Pillow uses the new extended runtime APIs to minimize battery consumption. Pillow is available on the App Store for iPhone, Apple Watch, and iPad. Discover all of Pillow's features at nabox.com slash pillow. That's N-E-Y-B-O-X dot com slash pillow. Sleep well and stay safe. Our thanks to Pillow for sponsoring Happy Hour. All right. Thanks, Pillow. So, Benjamin, uh, did you expect to be writing about Peloton this week? On the <laughs> <Mac>? <laughs> I mean... That was a... That was a bit of a surprise. I mean, we, uh, you had your freak gym kit encounter, yeah. you know, a fortnight ago. That yeah. was that was newsworthy. Yeah. Uh, but now we actually have what I would describe as a mainstream manufacturer of gym equipment actually selling a gym kit product. So yeah. the Peloton Bike Plus was announced this week, and it's shipping, you know, in a couple of weeks' time. I think it's twenty four hundred. It's just it's the basically the price of the old Peloton bike because they reduced the price of that one. Uh, and then the new one uh, came in at the same price point. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's 20, 2495 US and and uh and like, you know like in terms of like a stationary bike which is basically what a Peloton is, um it's it's pricey because part of it is that you're getting the big display so that you've got access to like live and on demand classes, like spin classes kind of thing. Um but in terms of gem kit stuff, $2500 is a value because if you if you want just a treadmill for example, it's like $10,000 plus because it's meant to be used in a, in a commercial environment, not your home. Um, and so this is the first time ever since since you know 2017 or so when gym kit was a thing where there's a solution that's that's actually meant to be owned by a customer and not like a gym owner or something. Yeah, reasonably affordable in the space of gym equipment, right? Like mm -hmm. you could definitely get bikes and next size bikes that are much cheaper, but uh the Peloton's definitely uh, the cheapest that I've seen that actually supports gym kit. And the little uh, NFC sensors on the top of their display, because all the Peloton bikes have basically like a 20-inch iPad stuck to the front of them where they show the UI and you can do fitness classes and stuff. Uh, but the Apple Watch sensors just like in the top middle, so you can just like lift your hand up, scan it, it automatically starts the workout, off you go. The two, the bike and the watch talk to each other to exchange information like resistance or you know heart rate information. So when you finally done with the workout, they have the most information about you, the most accurate information about you recorded in the health app. So, I mean, I think that it came a bit out of the blue, but I think it's uh, very much welcome. Like, yeah. The, the, so, so the Peloton bike before this, this is, I guess this is only their second version. They've changed the display before, and that's been like a new version of it, but not a whole new bike itself. This is the first time they've really changed the bike itself. Um, and aside from gym kit, like it's not not that much is different. The screen. Instead of being fixed in place, you can rotate it to the side um, and use it like a you know TV for other kind of classes that aren't for the bike. Um, but I, I believe, yeah, the gym kit stuff is just for the bike. That stuff would not be anything that works with the gym kit. Um, and then the other thing is is uh, it, it now can respond to resistance from the classes. So if you're like normally you you control the resistance with a knob and you still can but in, in the new bike plus version the knob can adjust for you based on what the instructor recommends to do um and like that's all very neat but <laughs> the gym kit stuff is like that, that's where it, that's that's what's really neat for us um and, and for the apple community because it's just, there hasn't been anything in you know three four years and now now there is and it just so happens to be something that people already kind of you know like and enjoy um they did do a new treadmill too, which they they call Tread, and they renamed their old treadmill to Tread Plus. But neither of those get gym kit, and Tread Plus is like forty five hundred dollars. That's the one that I reviewed last year, um, and it would be perfect if it had gym kit. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't. But otherwise, it's it's a phenomenal treadmill um, in terms of like how you control speed and resistance and the belt and everything. Um, but no gym kit, and and I, maybe they'll redesign it in the future and add gym kit because it's it's kind of lopsided the word for twenty five five twenty five hundred dollars you get gym kit for forty five hundred dollars you do not you know on bike versus treadmill um and then their new cheaper treadmill is i think twenty five hundred dollars the costs of the of the price of your bike but it doesn't have gym kit I, that's a big omission it's not out until december in the uk and 2021 in the us and, and uh, other places 
yeah for the treadmill because the bike's out yeah for the treadmill um you know which makes me think like you know is there time to squeeze gym kit in there because it's an nfc sensor it's not expensive it's just implementing it and presumably the software stack is mostly can mostly be shared across from what they do on the bike anyway exactly yeah um but i don't think they're going to do it even though there's still time to do it because they're not doing it on the tread plus and that's the old one so and it's too bad i mean i would i would buy a 2500 dollars treadmill <laughs> in a heartbeat i mean it's pricey but for for a gym kit treadmill 2500 dollars versus ten thousand, it's like all of a sudden you can finance it versus it being impossible <laughs> it's like on carplay where for you know for the first year or two You'd only find CarPlay on like the Ferraris, right? <laughs> the Porsches. And then finally it filtered down to the, you know, the still expensive cars, but the more, you know, a, a accessible cars. And, cars. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. finally, like now it's basically built into most entertainment centers. If you get the upgrade entertainment center on basically any vehicle, at least in, at least in Britain, yeah. you can get CarPlay on pretty, pretty much everything. So hopefully this will be the start of kind of per- per- pervasiveness of gym kit as well. Because yeah. And if, the, the whole gym kit pitch has been, you know, you, you get the, in a gym environment, it's that you don't have to log in with your data on a on a public machine, so that you don't leave behind your information. You know, whether it's age, weight, whatever, all that stuff, um, your profile. And and gym kit, the you know the thing there was the watch. It knows who you are, so you sync with it. And then when you when you're done with the session, the machine forgets all your information, and it's all synced together on your phone. So it's in it's, it's in the right place. Um, and and so I think that's why like Apple's focus was on on high end gym equipment. Um, at least in terms of like pitching this out, but clearly there's like what what happens with Peloton is that you have to have a an external heart rate monitor that you wear, or you can try and kind of like do workaround hacks to get the watch to work with it. But then you've got to log the workout in the watch app that's using this workaround, and it's not good. Um, so I think what most people care care about with this version of the Peloton bike is that. You know, it's like gym kit. What is that? Who cares? Oh, now I can use my watch as my heart rate monitor that I was already wearing. And I'm tracking the workout with. So it's kind of interesting that it's like the the big pitch of gym kit is you get the most accurate data. In this case, it's you get to use your watch as your heart rate monitor, and you don't have to fiddle with another one. Um, and I think that's like going to be the most practical convenience. And then the- yeah, and if you just like wake up in the morning, you just step up to the machine, and you go beep, and then you just yeah. do it, right? Like you don't have to fiddle about setting each individual thing up or only recording on the peloton and then syncing it, you know, some other way. Like there's just a nice it's convenience, right? And that's <laughs> and that's why it was such a good feature. But you know, it's stupid that it was limited to literally like the ten thousand dollar machines until yes. until now and peloton obviously do want you to like subscribe and stuff right but you don't have to like if you like the peloton subscription is not mandatory on, You're right you, on... you could use it as a as a as a, as a dumb bike and, yeah and just, just right, right exactly yeah yeah and if you're gonna and if if your plan is to just you know set your settings and run with the watch right you don't necessarily have to pay have to pay the subscription if you don't want to uh their their, their, their subscription is mostly for like if you want to follow along with their fitness classes, right? And they have instructors that do sessions on a daily basis and stuff. Kind of like the rumored Apple fitness thing that mm-hmm. is, maybe is probably... we're a few days away from learning about. A- Apple negotiated the gym kit deal for this uh, completely style. before they started making their own fitness class. Yeah, it's, it's Amazon style, right? Like, yeah. Money changed hands. Now we don't know that, but. No, we don't know. But that, <laughs> I'm sure Peloton wasn't very happy. They were like, oh, we got a deal with Apple to do gym kit stuff. Oh, Apple's competing with us. Uh, <laughs> it's a. You know, mixed emotions. Yeah, but that that was uh, kind of a neat a neat announcement. I mean, it's been rumored for a while. The gym kit stuff wasn't necessarily there, um, but the idea that there's going to be a cheaper treadmill and a pricier bike, and and it just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and then we we have a, a sister site called Connect the Watch that covers smart gym equipment, and our colleague Bradley Chambers is is running that. So there's more information about you know the specifics of of this stuff that isn't just the gym kit stuff. If you're interested in that, this uh, ConnectTheWatch.com is that website. Um, speaking of a sister site, 9 to 5 Google, our, our colleague, uh, Kyle Bradshaw, he <laughs> had a really cool Apple scoop today. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> yeah. So you may recall a few weeks ago, our, our uh, former colleague, Mark Herman, now at Bloomberg News, reported first that Apple's bundle would have multiple tiers and be called Apple One. And, you know, okay. Uh, today, Kyle Bradshaw at 9 to 5 Google uncovered an actual reference to Apple One in code in the Android app for Apple Music. So it's like a direct reference to Apple One being a bundle, being able to access Apple Music without you know paying extra. 
Um, and so that's confirmation. You know, it, it, it just adds to, to Mark Gurman's report about Apple One. This is what they've got encoded in the Android app for Apple Music. So it's also the first leak we've seen from Android, uh, from Apple Music for Android, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously over the summer, um, we did a bit of a... Uh... Uh, Felipe Esposito did a bit of reporting on Android Mac about early references to uh, bundle services and bundle features in iOS 14 code, right? We did a post about that a few months ago, but the actual like brand name Apple One wasn't found or anything of that sort. When uh, Mark did his reporting, you know, we checked in our in what we can see, see if we could find any evidence of it in uh, iOS, and it wasn't there. So you know, Apple's been uh, cleaning up the cobwebs, but the one place they didn't look was the Android app for Apple Music. So. Uh, he, he, you know, and, it, and it's as clear as day. There's no ambiguity here. Carl literally found strings that say "included in Apple One" with the A and the one capitalized. So it's not yeah, even just like you can manage instance. your Apple One subscription using your iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, or Mac. So yeah, and your Apple Music <laughs> subscription will be included in Apple One starting. And there's a placeholder for what the date will be. And uh, your Apple Music subscription will automatically cancel if you have the Apple One, so you don't get charged twice, which makes sense. Although, rather amusingly, if you have um, one of those carrier deals, so if you get the Verizon Apple Music offer, right? So if you have the higher plan uh, of Verizon Unlimited, uh, that comes with Apple Music. Uh, that one doesn't actually cancel automatically. So you do actually, in that, so if you have the Verizon plan, you have to manually cancel if you've already subscribed to Apple Music just to be able to take a bunch of the carrier one. But at least for Apple's own bundle, uh, they're going to, you know, gracefully transfer you over so you don't get double charged. So <laughs> they don't get sued. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. And, I mean, we, we kind of speculate in the headline that, that, you know, just just put it into context that this is um, the services the week before the event. Um, you, you think this is something that would have stage time at the event as part of the services, that, you know, uh, <laughs> change for this year? Yeah, I mean, it's a... It's a good question. Like, uh, I kind of think that they're going to do it with their phones, and but on the but is, there, on, is, there, is there a phone angle to the bundle though, or is it a services pitch? I mean, maybe if you think they're going to do like a, you get one free year of Apple One with the phone, or something. you know how they did TV Plus last year, and then they uh, they bundled yeah, the year too, of it with that's, the, that's too generous though. Come on, like, yeah. <laughs> also, they have they run into and Apple One is four things so. Right, they ran into licensing problems because they can't give away Apple Music a year for free by bundling it with the hardware because the music labels go mental. So they probably can't do that actually. So maybe they do announce the bundle next week, and then even if there is a you know like a one month promo or two month promo with the phones, they can just do that in October. Uh, especially if they're going to announce the fitness service, mm. then if that's you know that's directly funneled as supposedly going to be on the highest plan of Apple One, so it kind of goes together. So Apple, if Apple I, Music required, I wonder. You know, Peloton they've had issues in the past with with what they can license in terms of music, um, because it, it, part of that workout system is that you you come to the class and then the music is supplied for you. You don't bring your own music. Yeah, they basically just provide a silent stream of voice, and you have to bring your own music to. It. Well, so well, they, so they 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 bring music. And they and they have instructors, and so you you don't bring your music unless you want to silence the instructor, basically. Right. Okay. Um, and, and so they've had issues in the past where they get sued for licensing reasons of uh, music usage, and and so they had to limit the catalog of like what can their class be. And <laughs> part of the Peloton pitch is also not just live classes, but but on demand. And so like if you've got years of classes that the music can't be used anymore, then you lose those classes. Um, so maybe Apple's pitch here could be well they've got deals with with music labels for Apple Music require that subscription for the fitness stuff and then it's unlimited what you know they could they could use in, in the uh in, in their classes if there's something that, that they're doing yeah apple one will definitely require uh like code support so ios will have to uh you know incorporate all the screens that are going to be the upsell screen so, so like I, be... ios 14.8 <laughs> yeah so like uh, i think uh, mark uh, actually when mark did the apple one report he said it might come in 14.1 which is also rumored to be the the version that the iPhone 12 ships with. So mm-hmm. maybe that's the reason why they don't announce it, you know, in a week's time. But they equally they could just say, look, we're doing this bundle. Get ready for it. It's coming next month. You know, like mm-hmm. it just if they're going to do the fitness service, then they kind of have to announce the bundle at the same yeah. time. I guess it'd be 13.8 if they were to do it on this version. And right. Get the, yeah. Because they're already on 13.7, right? Yeah, they're already <laughs> after the raises there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like 14.0, 14.1, but. Uh, that'd be the only reason why it's probably not next week. But again, we'll talk about event stuff in a little bit. EE, uh, the UK carrier, uh, actually <laughs> kind of preempted a, a services bundle with their own, which they call a full works plan, which is apparently in partnership with uh, Apple in some degree, where basically if you're an EE subscriber, which is like 
the leading uh, carrier in, in the UK, and they've had loads of punches before with Apple and iPhone stuff. They had one of the first um, six months free of Apple Music deals was was with EE as well. Uh, their new offering, you can basically pay uh, and pay one you know carrier billing price, and you get Apple Music, Apple News Plus. Sorry, no, you don't get Apple News Plus. That's the one you don't get. You get Apple Music, Arcade, and TV Plus uh, at a discount. And yet, I believe on that, you save about uh, £11 over buying all three separately and just paying for the same cell phone plan. So by getting the bundled one, you basically get like TV Plus and and Arcade for free because you basically only pay for the music subscription, Uh, which is, you know, a pretty good saving and may even beat what the saving of the Apple One bundle will be because German... uh, said that you know you might be saving five dollars on the most expensive apple one plan so uh it's funny that this came out you know literally like a month ahead of what we expect to be the uh you know the first party offering but you know the carriers can change around i'm sure they can switch it over to an apple one bundle if they want to be it'll be the apple one bundle tier two that doesn't have this isn't isn't it right like that's the thing about apple one it's the name's apple one but there's not one version of it there's going to be like 10 of them so (laughs) And we'll have to wait for like official pricing and stuff to know exactly right. how good of a deal or not it's going to be. Yeah. And then and then also kind of in the services around this week, um, Vizio and then LG, they bring the Apple TV app to more TVs. Right. So Vizio had been promised. Uh, Vizio had already done like AirPlay uh, support, but they hadn't done the TV app natively. Uh, that's and that was bobbed around for coming this year and then it got pushed back a little bit but then apple said coming this summer so i guess they finally scraped in under the wire on the official definition of summer uh, <laughs> so now you can get vizio on tvs dating back to about 2018 from vizio and you even get three months free of tv plus with it which they didn't do for the samsung deal even though the samsung deal was originally exclusive so if you have a vizio tv you get three months free of tv plus if you're not an existing subscriber okay. and then lg has brought it to more tvs too so they originally they went back and forth and when they were going to support 2018 class of tvs or not yeah. they've done it for 2019 2020 there well now they've actually shipped it for the 2018 tvs as well so okay. you know more distribution for the tv app and we still promised Sony TVs to get the TV app. So that's the last one to look out for. But then they finally met their promise back from like March of last year. Yeah, <laughs> so. I wonder, wonder what it is with Sony that's, that's, that's taking so long. That's odd. Um, the, the LG thing is interesting because I think mine, my, my OLED is a 2017. So it's, it was never going to be one that gets the TV app. But that's the TV that we use the Apple TV with anyway. So. And you'd hope after they finally get the distribution everywhere they promised, then they can make the app better. <laughs> I see ads on Twitter for the Twitter, for the Apple TV app all the time now. Like, yeah, they started that like within the last two, and the ad really infuriates me because it says it's, it's so it, simple. It says it's so simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so simple. All your TV, all in one place. And then and it's like the this big stack. The ad, uh, yeah, it's a big stack of app icons of like the different networks. Obviously excluded is Netflix because uh-huh. they don't get on board at all. And half the comments in the reply to the ad is just people complaining that Netflix is included. <laughs> then you've got another half people not understanding what the TV app does at all because no one does. And then you have a you know a few more people complaining that TV Plus doesn't have content. But I love the thing about Twitter ads is like normally you see the ads and from just like random companies and all the all the all the comments are just people complaining like it's just people voicing their like hatred for it <laughs> and then most of the apple ads don't have that because you know in general most apple products people like but then the tv app ads have started and <laughs> the first three words are, it's so simple and it's like you know you're kind of pushing you're pushing your luck there apple like, that's where you lean into the weakness and you, you, you advertise that part out <laughs> yeah and the and the video they've got attached to the ad is pretty slick like it looks it cool nice. it's, yeah it's a cool little animation but it has no correlation to like the actual quality of the experience that you get. No, from that as, as I'm looking at that stack on that Twitter ad, I'm seeing, okay, that one's a, a channel. That one's just integrated because um, it pulls you in. That one, you know, it's like, okay, that's part of the TV app. It's, it's so Yeah, and they have a separate stack icon for TV Plus, like uh-huh. the TV Plus icon. But, you know, that's just muddled in the mix. And it's like, come on, yeah. Apple, please. <laughs> Dissecting please the it TV out. app. <laughs> huh. Okay. All right, let's take another uh, spot break there. For sure. We are sponsored this week by Fundrise. Smart investing means having a diversified portfolio, a combination of stocks, bonds, mutual funds. But if you've ever looked at the details of the most successful portfolios, you usually find a diversified set of real estate. And real estate is not easily available to individual investors until now. Fundrise enables anyone to access these asset classes. It makes it easy to build a portfolio of institutional quality real estate investments, Whether you're just starting out in the field or you're looking to grow, 
Fundrise has got you covered. It's an investing platform that makes investing in high quality real estate as simple as investing in the stock market. You can build a stable cash flow with a dividend based portfolio or look for long term growth with appreciation. Fundrise supports all different pathways. And it manages more than $1 billion in assets for 130,000 investors. Since 2014, the Fundrise platform has averaged 8.7 to 12.4% annual returns, and investors have made in excess of $79 million in dividends alone. Fundrise connects you with a team of real estate professionals that vet and manage all of the investments. You can track your portfolio's performance through the easy-to-use Fundrise website. Start building your better portfolio today. Get started at fundrise.com slash happy hour to have your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash happy hour to get your first 90 days of advisory fees waived. Fundrise.com slash happy hour. All right. Thanks, Fundrise. So we've got the Apple event on Tuesday. This is the um, Time Flies event. Uh, Mayo, can you give me your description of, of the of the logo for this event? I'd call it an infinite loop <laughs> okay. that lays out the shape of the Apple logo. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. It reminds me of like uh, like like um, foam uh, mm-hmm. like shaving cream or something that's just like everywhere. Like you know what I first saw when I thought of it? it? The things that what do they call them that you wear in the pool when you're a little kid and they're like like tubes that you like hang on to like noodles right okay. like did you ever do you yeah, have yeah, them yeah, in america yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and it's like three of them like wound in the shape of an apple logo yeah yeah and it's blue it is blue uh this this is fun i mean let's, let's kind of go through the process of how this mm-hmm. event was announced because um there were rumors of something happening this week there was disagreement about what it would be then we were going into the day expecting yeah. an ipad air maybe apple watch stuff hardware wise uh, and then over the weekend, uh, German said uh, he doesn't think that's going to happen. There's going to be an invite going out instead. And uh, he was ultimately correct, obviously. Uh, on the day of the thing, uh, everyone was looking around for press releases about new products. Didn't happen. But if you looked on Twitter, people realized that if you started doing a tweet with the hashtag Apple event, the classic Apple hashtag, it would actually have those little icons that go next to him, which are like the sponsored event things. Where they call it fl- they're called fl- Apparently, flat, flat this was text. news to me this week. I've ne- me, uh, obviously, me they've had like for for years, and only this week has it actually realized what they're called. They're called hash flags. Hash flags. Ooh. Okay, I was gonna say flag tag. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got your hashtag, and then next to it, you get this fancy icon, which is hash flag. Hash and the flag. icon was a blue Apple logo. And uh, there's this website where you can see like when they started and stuff. And indeed, the hash flag was initiated uh, on the eighth, and it was set to run through the twenty eighth. Uh, but Apple had not yet announced an actual event. So for about six hours, people were just tweeting hashtag Apple event. It was, it was trending little, and there was no event And announced. it was trending and no one had a clue what was going on. And I'm pretty sure that Apple didn't mean to do it that way. Like either Apple screwed up or Twitter screwed up, but I presume that... It worked. <laughs> it, I mean, it worked, but I yeah. presume the hash flag was not meant to be started until the actual invites went out because uh, it was very confusing. And it's not the first time that an Apple and Twitter collaboration for promotion has backfired. Uh, <laughs> most recently, it, with the iPhone 7, uh, Twitter advertising started releasing ads of like the iPhone 7 pictures getting splashed with water because it was the first year it went waterproof. Yeah, that, and that yeah, happened. We were, we were covering the keynote. Like, in yeah, time. that happened literally within like the first second of the keynote starting. So, yeah. way ahead of the hardware so being we had available. To start writing stories about things that weren't even in the keynote yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the iPhone 7 yeah. waterproof. Yeah. It was. It's crazy. They haven't made that mistake again. And leaking a hash flag is slightly less embarrassing than like a video of your actual product. But yeah, I mean, if, if it would have been, I think there was just so much like, you know, what will happen today in the air that, that that's what made it really interesting. Because otherwise they'd be like, oh, oops, they, they had one plan and then didn't do it, you know, because um, I, I would have wrote it off as just that, that they usually have a September event this year. They're not going to have one. Um, and you, you could see how it was scheduled. Well, they had the test. They had the test YouTube th- mess up as well like a week ago right yeah 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 so it was a slip up i'm pretty sure but it was such a small slip up that it kind of just added to the hype train Mm -hmm. and then you know in the afternoon for me i'm sure it was like midday for you they actually announced the event for real time flies Mm -hmm. and the text is all blue right and they even have an ar easter egg so if you click on the logo on your phone you can see an animated version of the noodles apple 
transmogrify into the numbers 9.15, as in the 15th September, written the wrong way around because it's American. Uh, <laughs> so you, we've got this blue theme. All the text is blue. You've got you can, the... You can pose with it because it's AR. It's, yeah, it's AR. <laughs> and what was, what is rumored to be blue and have a LiDAR sensor, which helps with AR? Time the iPhone flight. 12, right? <laughs> time of flight. Time flies, iPhone 12, yeah. everybody. Time of flight camera. Deep blue, new color to replace the midnight green color that yeah. I hate. Yeah, at this point in the day, we're all this is all that we're working with. It all yeah. makes sense. iPhone 12 event unveiled. Yeah, and Mark and Mark Kermit even tweets out that it's blue because of the blue iPhone. I mean, we're we're all in that camp. We're on the. I mean, we're on we're on the we're on the path. Like yes. Apple doesn't, you know, Apple doesn't always include Easter eggs in their little event invites and and the icons and stuff. But this one felt pretty on the nose, right? Like you had a little AR, a little AR a nod, and you had the blue color. But time flies. Time of flight. <laughs> time flew, and very quickly, about ten minutes after the invite went out, uh, the fact that the iPhone 12 was going to be part of it was basically squashed into the ground. Yeah, Mark deleted his tweet. Yeah, <laughs> Mark <laughs> apparently found out information after he posted his original story that the iPhone 12 was not going to feature, and they're going to hold it for October. And about we, a minute we, we later, just, I mean, we we knew there wouldn't be phones in September that they'd be released in October, right? But by having a September event in the middle of the month, it's like okay, well, they're going to announce them and they're going to release them at the beginning of October, or so you know. But that this is this then gets reported out, you know, first by Mark, then by a number of other places that no phones this month at all. Yeah, uh, enough publications had the same story within the space of like thirty seconds of each other. Mm -hmm. This has to be Apple setting expectations in one way or another, right? Like, they it would be disastrous if people went heading into Tuesday expecting the iPhone 12 to be announced and it didn't happen. Yeah. So this is like a perfect opportunity for Apple to do a quote-unquote controlled leak where, you know, they don't lower the expectations. They just funnel the expectations in the right direction. So it's like, okay, we know the iPhone's coming out next month, but really it's not going to be announced next week either. It's coming later. Presumably, there's going to be another event next month. Yeah, which... that's, what, that's what's kind of so interesting about this yeah. is because they've got to pack, you know, an hour and a half or so of a, a produced video with products next week, and none of it will be iPhone, even though it's iPhone month, you know, but not this year. And and then do it again next year. I mean, maybe they have like an hour and 20 minute event next, next month, but, you know, and four iPhones next month, that's, you know, I mean... The, they're 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 not that unlike that that it's easy to do in an event like that, but but maybe there's so much stuff that's rumored that we'll see a little bit this month, a little bit next month, and that's how they they pull it off. Yeah. So if you look like last year, right? Because generally Apple follows pretty rigorous schedules on stuff like this. So last year they had a September event, and then they had press briefings for other products in October and November, like the AirPods Pro and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, right? So they generally, you know, in recent history, have just had like the media event in September and then press briefings for other products later. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go back a little bit, you get to like the 2018 iPad Pro year where you had the iPhone event that they brought everyone to in 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 real, you know, in person because it was a different age. Uh, and then the very next month, they brought everyone to New York for the I Love New York event where they announced the new iPad Pros and the MacBook Air update. So they, you know, they do a normal, you know, they've done both strategies where you have one event and then just press briefings or you have one event in September and one event in October. So it's not like at the question for them, right? And I, I'm trying to remember what did they announce in the 2018 September event? It would have been the iPhone XS, the Apple Watch Series 4. Maybe that was it? I think. Yeah, I, don't I think remember. that was it. <laughs> yeah, remember. like, so, but so do many, you know what? I'm... So many events have happened between now and then that I don't recall. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been Series 4, iPhone XS. I'm pretty sure that was about it. Uh, iPhone 10 and then they had the October event where they did the iPad Pro and the MacBook Air, right? And the Mac Mini update. So, like, they don't have to have, you know, reams and reams of products to spam both events. They've shown they don't have to do that. And this year, it's even easier than ever to, like, host multiple events because you don't have to bring people anywhere there's no travel right like i'm sure on apple's logistical side there's still plenty of effort maybe the same amount of effort in actually arranging the thing but in terms of inconvenience to the people they're inviting 
you know, you're just sitting at home watching a video at the end of the day. So I think they can very easily get away with having two separate events. And because it's, you know, WWDC was one thing because you've got like four major software platforms to go through. Um, and, and so, and, and that was pretty lengthy and, and packed. And, you know, there was a lot, a lot there. It was a really good production. Um, this could easily be 60 minutes and everyone would be satisfied. It doesn't have to be an hour and a half or, or you know, closer to two hours. So yeah, they've it, got no requirement for it to be set lengths. Yeah, right? it, like, it can be like, it, because it's so produced necessarily, it, it can be like 60 minutes runtime and that's that's your whole thing, you know? And it yeah, and there was a lot of um, people on Twitter pointing to the calendar events. So if you go on Apple.com. It doesn't com, have change though. <laughs> exactly, slash Apple events. You can click on a button and you get added to your calendar a nice time slot. But for as long as I can remember, that calendar event has always been set for two hours long. Yeah, and so. the events are not always two hours long. Sometimes one time it was like a little bit longer, and that was rough. But uh, yeah, there's WWC where it's two hours twenty, but generally yeah, they're between like they're one hour shorter. Yeah. yeah, usually they're like one hour thirty to two hours. That's mm -hmm. the that's the average window. Yeah, and then they just always set for two. hours. It's just what happens because yeah. they don't want to leak. Like it'd be stupid if they did a short event and be like, "This event's gonna be boring because the calendar event's short," or "This event's gonna be really good because it's longer." And then you know they don't want to put those influences on people so yeah. the calendar events always two hours long regardless of how long the actual event is now i think it's reasonable to say they're not going to hold a 45 minute event because why bother so <laughs> it's probably be to the next one yeah it'll probably be in the hour and a half range and so what we're going to see we're pretty sure is not the iphone but there's going to be the uh ipad air update and then the Apple Watch Series 6, right? Let, let, let's take a sponsor break for a moment, and then we'll get more into the event and, and what we think we'll see in less than a week's time. Sure. So for our last sponsor of the episode, it is thanks to our friends at Smile Software. Text Expander removes the repetition out of work so you can focus on what matters most. Save time typing and boost your productivity. Text Expander helps you manage everything that you type repetitively. Email addresses, phone numbers, common message replies, and so much more. Just turn the things you type into reusable snippets to access them time and time again. Your snippets can be simple like a phone number or more complicated like a form with fill-in fields and automatically calculated dates. Text Expander works everywhere you type. Slack, Google Docs, Trello, email, web browsers, everywhere. And it goes beyond simple find and replace. Customize your reusable snippets with fill-in fields and pop-up lists. So you could quickly stamp out an invoice with easily editable fields to change only the bits that need to be customized for each individual. If you've ever written something twice, there's a good chance that you could work smarter and use a text expander snippet instead. It's not just about automating repetitive work. Reusing snippets ensures consistency in your messaging. Text expander is available for macOS, iPhone, iPad, Windows, and Chrome. And text expander for Teams makes it easy to manage and share snippets across your organization. Again, unlock your productivity with Text Expander. Listeners to this show can get 20% off their first year subscription. Just go to textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more and sign up. That's textexpander.com slash podcast. All right. Thanks, Smile and Text Expander. All right. So event stuff. What, let's, let's break down what we think we will see with iPhones out of the way. So let's do iPad first, right? So okay. there's been all of these leaks about this iPad Air redesign, right? We've talked about it last week. You've got this, not, and the week before that, you, there was this leak pamphlet and these schematics that basically show uh, iPad Air inspired by the iPad Pro. So you get thinner bezels, uh, there's no home button, uh, you get flat sides, there's going to be a magnetic charging port to support the second generation Apple Pencil, uh, supposedly switching to USB-C as well, uh, and it's got the smart connector on the back, which will you know, 99% be supporting for the Magic Keyboard accessory. Probably they won't even need to make a new Magic Keyboard. Uh, a, a listen to this show actually um, responded to me and said, well, the, if it's going to be 10.8 inches and the bezel is slightly wider, then they can probably just fit it in the 11-inch ma Magic Keyboard case, which makes perfect sense. You know, just carry on the production line. They can sell it for two hundred and fifty dollars. Hours, stupid there's your, expensive. There's your keyboard and trackpad right there. There's your keyboard and trackpad right there. Apple makes loads of money on those accessories, but people really want them. So it's like a match made in heaven. And then you've got this iPad Air that takes the best bits of the iPad Pro design, but by uh, trimming the cost down, the bezels won't be quite as thin. Uh, you still get the nice rounded edges look um, on the screen. And you're not going to get Face ID, supposedly. What we think it's going to be instead is a 
biometric enabled power button so you like put your thumb on it and it does a touch id fingerprint scan in the button instead and maybe that button will also then come to like the next iphone se next year or something because quo talked about that before mm -hmm. but it seems like it at least right now it's coming first to this ipad air and although we obviously don't know the pricing we do know that it's going for the ipad air line because the pamphlet that you said ipad air written on it so the current ipad air is what 4.99 so even if they made it slightly more expensive at 5.99 it's still way cheaper than the like 7.99 starting price yeah, yeah. of the ipad pro line so it's bringing like the best bits of the ipad pro USB-C, and the more modern design language with no home button and gesture-based navigation you know without breaking the bank so i think yeah. it's going to be a very good product if you use a combination like ipad pro is awesome and if it's like your laptop replacement or computer alternative then that's terrific you know and it can be a good value there especially if the you know with with sailor and everything it can be really awesome um if you use a portable mac and an ipad pro then you can kind of double your cost and not necessarily double your productivity i think um, so by having something like this in the lineup, you know, that, that's kind of where I've been less comfortable with the iPad Pro in the recent years with also using um, a MacBook Pro is that they're, so, they're both so high in cost and like one is better for me than the other, but I like the iPad, you know, and, and so if, if we have this iPad Air where it's modern and it's not the dated look and everything, um, but it's also, you know, back to like affordable iPad prices where it's not super high end, then that's really appealing. Um, I think both of us will be a fan of this one. And you've got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the first generation. Right? The OG, yeah, yeah, 2015 model. This would be an upgrade for you, like if you were okay with the screen <laughs> size. But I guess you like the bigger one, huh? I do like the bigger screen, yeah. Like, yeah. and I mean, the same reason why I don't buy the new iPad Pro is probably the same reason why I wouldn't be like rush. Oh, I'd happily recommend this to people who need just like an iPad for you know entertainment and doing web browsing and email stuff. But like, if I'm going to be spending that much money on something, I need to be like truly good at productivity uses and the ipad os operating system continues to be plagued by you know bad multitasking poor file management stuff like it's just way more complicated than what you can do on a macbook so i'm just carrying along with my ipad that i basically just use to watch like video nowadays and maybe twitter right and i'll be happy to invest in an ipad pro again when they can like the, the multitasking is the thing that annoys me the most like and it, we've been complaining about ipad multitasking since ios 11 <laughs> then we had iOS 12, no change. I was 13, they made it worse. I was 14, no change. So, uh, you know, uh, that's why I've got a 2015 iPad Pro because it's still the same. And I think when they added the uh, the stuff last year with the multiple um, like slide over windows, I just think they made it even more complicated by adding like a second axis of complexity there. So I'm not super happy with the multitasking situation on the iPad. Uh, but they already showed what they're doing for iPad OS 14 this year and they're not addressing it. So roll it on, right? Like, yeah. But the iPad Air, like the current iPad Air kind of kind of squeezed out, right? From you've got the budget 329 iPad, which has the older design, but it's also much cheaper. Yeah. And then you've got the iPad Pro, which starts at like $800. So it's really expensive and it looks nice and modern. And then in the middle, you've got the current iPad Air, which looks like the cheap one, but it's, basically twice the price so i feel like the current ipad Air doesn't really sit very well in the lineup like the differentiation on both sides is not very good what they've got proposing here with the rumored one uh it solves that problem right like the budget ipad can still be cheap and it will look quote unquote old but you know nothing wrong with it for 329 it's a great ipad and then you only have to go slightly up the ladder and you get one that has you know the modern design language with gesture-based uh, control and stuff and it shouldn't be too much more expensive and then if you really want to go the full hog you can get the ipad pro which will have like the promotion screen and i'm sure they'll give it an a14x at some point this year like i'm presuming that this ipad air probably is going to have an a14 chip in it not x that's like, what so, so the same chip as an iphone 12 right yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what i'm i mean could be wrong and the <laughs> rumors certainly the rumors certainly aren't clear on this, but that has been what I've been like modeling in my head is that this iPad Air have A14 and then when they do the iPad Pro update, that'll get like the A14X situation. Mm -hmm. Which would be that uh, kind of funny in that the they're going to show the chip off before it comes to the phone. But you have to remember like this schedule is not what they wanted, right? Like That's in a perfect fair. world, the iPad and the phone will probably be updated at the same time in September, but the phone's got pushed back a lot. So it's yeah. not happening. And they've shown in the past, they've happily done it. Like originally, 
the new silicon would always come to the iPad first. Like you can go all the way back to like the iPad two where they did the A5 chip in the iPad two, and then it came to the 4S in the fall, right? So it was only in the, like the last three or four years where they flipped you on its head where it'd come to the iPhone first and then come to the iPad with a, you know, with an X designation written on the back end. So I think they're perfectly happy to announce an A14 chip, you know, next week. And then even if the phone's not coming out for another month, because like they, this was just set in stone months ago. And they, at that time they would have thought that the phone probably was coming out first, but you know, yeah, stuff so, happened. Or, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, and speaking of chips, I mean, we, we don't really have it to talk about in our notes, but is there any chance that the September event next week is one where we're, you know, there's, there's no phones, um, but could we see the first uh, Apple Silicon Mac announced here? Or is, is that probably the other half of an iPhone event timed with the release of Big Sur, Mac OS Big Sur? I mean, that is the question, right? Like, you've got this iPad Air update. Yeah. We can probably give like 20 minutes to, right? Then you're going to have the Apple Watch Series 6, which we don't know much about, but we know it's got a blood oxygen sensor and then probably a faster chip. But unless they've you know really hid something from us, and to be fair, they hid it always on display from us last year. So we yeah. could be surprised by something mental. Is there really going to be like a monumental keynote segment for well, the, the redesign only like the redesign was like was rumored, you know, quote how the redesign. And then we saw it because it leaked and we caught it. Um you know but it wasn't uh, now that that was a series four though right like, right 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 the year, the yeah. year before i mean the year before um, right but it yeah. was like late in the game when we when we had the, the images mm -hmm. um, you know quo had said there there would be a redesign um yep. i think i actually two years ahead he said it'll be next year um and you know and there's the whole time flies could this be a watch focused is is watch us was it were we on now seven seven yeah is it, is it so lackluster because so much of it requires new hardware and like this is the rest of watch os seven for this time flies event and that's why they're, and they don't even have a phone there it's like or or is it just you know what what's kind of expected which is a um a, a better version of the series three and then a series six you know with with, with marginal improvements and new sensors yeah like so, I mean, I'm really interested to see what they've got in store. Like, the time flies definitely seems to refer to an Apple Watch if it's not referring to the phone. Yeah. So, hopefully it's, they've got something that, more to show beyond yeah. just, like, blood oxygen. Yeah, it's just that so much of the, the watch opportunities now, I think, lie in software improvements because the hardware has has advanced pretty quickly. Um, and they haven't caught up to, like, always on display. You know, they, they, they've got it for the watch face, and they, they need it for more, more areas, different apps and, and different watch face modes. But... Uh, doesn't that would that would be more of a WWDC thing, and that didn't happen this year. Yeah, there are rumors, obviously, of the you know Apple Watch Series Three S, which is different because in previous years they've just taken the exact same models and just dropped the prices down. Yeah. So that would give them a, a bit more like duration of keynote time to explain in terms of you know exactly what's different or what's brought for what what combination of Series Three and Series Five have you got in this cheaper product, right? And why are they doing a new model for the first time and stuff like so that you know that has some ceremony associated with it. But at least where we're sitting from the vantage point today, I think they're going to have to have something else. It's it's the watch and then it's the fitness stuff and then it's the bundle and right. So one option <laughs> yeah. is they do the fitness stuff, yeah. right? And I'm and the fitness classes. It's like Apple Music. They can spend like fifteen minutes just showing you demos that's, of oh yeah, here's the here's the, the fitness heavy. class and here's what it looks like on the Apple TV and then look it's synced to the watch on the phone and then it's in this iPhone app on iOS fourteen. You know the app that's now renamed Fitness. Look at this new tab it's got where it, you know it sells you all these subscriptions. So yeah, the fitness side is definitely one angle. Uh. And then the bundle probably has to come along with that. I personally think they're going to do the bundle with the phone. I don't know why, but I feel like they're going to do the bundle with the phone. So it's, we'll see. We'll see. But then you have to look at the other hardware on the table. Like what else it, is it going to be, right? Because uh, there's, there's, there's headphones. There's headphones. You've got Apple Studio. Yeah. There's, You've got... There could, uh, there could be HomePod Mini. And HomePod a, Mini. It's such, a, such a small product that, you know, there's Apple TV. These are all so Yeah, the Apple TV and... update, which is now rumored for next year, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, the small HomePod, yeah. And then you've got AirTags, right? And Digitimes, just this week, said that AirTags are already in production. So maybe the AirTags are going to be coming out next week. Again, kind of like an iPhone product, but they could they could do it standalone. That'll be good to get out <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's been long in the, long in the tooth, long in the running, uh, and 
you know, that it doesn't matter. Would you they bring it out this month or next month? It's not going to be more appropriate for the world situation. Yeah. So you see, we just Kyle have to... had this thing now where they'll ensure like up to a thousand dollars if you lose an item. Like they're getting more competitive. Oh really? I didn't see that. No, yeah, that's funny. yeah. They've got a new insurance thing where if you lose a tile tracked item, I think up to a thousand dollar value, they'll cover it. It's like oh, they're getting more competitive before Apple even gets to market because Apple's coming to market. You know. Yeah, that. Um, I mean, <laughs> that like the for the iPhone Apple Care theft and loss plan. Yeah. They basically have something like that because you insure the phone for for theft and loss, but you have to have uh, find my iPhone turned on. You so if you have find my phone turned on, useless to whoever finds it, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have find my iPhone turned on for location and to make it useless to whoever finds it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of Apple's. Apple already has a stance on that, where it's like, you know, we'll we'll insure your phone, but you may, you got to make sure you're getting tracked around yeah. the place, so we don't want you just stealing it. We're for, not going to pay you to lose your thing, but we're going to cover it if you're. Yeah, exactly. Place. And so you can imagine in the future they'd be have a similar Apple Care. There's another service for you, Apple Care device loss. You just have to make sure an AirTag stuck to it. It can be any device. Yeah. Could be a yeah. Oh no. So, so I think air tags is a reasonable, reasonable uh, chance. And then you said, obviously, time, time Apple... flies. Air tag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if your time's lost, how do you find it again? <laughs> and then the other one is obviously the Apple Silicon Mac stuff. Yeah. Fingers crossed for that because that excites me. I mean, yes, I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, don't you feel like it's going to be October though? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because Mac OS tends to run longer, and it tends to be when October when they when they get it ready. And that's totally this year. And they could even say like, like December. <laughs> they, they, they didn't. They didn't say it would be like in the fall, right? They, or did they say it'd be this year? Or this they fall? said by the end of the year. By the end of the year, okay. So that could be December thirtieth, you know, kind of thing. We've we've seen that before. Um, but just to show it off would be kind of neat. I mean, you know. Yeah, like I think you, um, a few it, different places have indicated that iOS fourteen. And uh, WatchOS 7 will be launching in September, which makes sense because the iPad's going to have to run. The new iPad Air is going to run iOS 14, and the new Watch is going to run WatchOS 7. So that has to be ready to go. And so you're probably going to see iOS 14 come out on either like somewhere between the 23rd and the 30th. But we don't have the same assurances for macOS. So, and the macOS betas are still pretty rough, as you experience, right? Right. Big sir, big sir. It's not quite there yet. I think it's uh, pretty. It's pretty, but stability wise, like if I told you that macOS Big Sur was launching in a week and a half, would you be uh, happy or would you be thinking they should wait? I would be like, oh, cool. They got some really good fixes in the works. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to you, use those. You'd be crossing your fingers. Yeah. So, yeah, like realistically, it seems like macOS might be like the end of October, which then lines up Apple Silicon Max to be like coming out in November, for yeah. instance. So that would fall over to the October event. And I'm sure Apple can make a huge deal about they can do iPhone and they can do Apple Silicon Max as like a really strong combination. Yeah. yeah. I, well, there certainly is a lot here for, for two event, two virtual events, two video produced events. Yeah, they can definitely do it. Like, especially when they have to throw in the service stuff and, you know, they can always do another like TV plus trailer, surely somewhere in the mix and... They will have some other nice surprises. Maybe they'll have a game demo, but not from Epic Games. Because you uh, think we'll get anything with with, with TV Plus? So they've got, um, you know, we mentioned before last week. I guess it was the AR stuff. There's there's the original podcast things that have been kind of floating out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Apple original Apple podcasting, Apple. by the way, they might make a big deal in, of when they general, do Apple One. Yeah, yeah in, in general, as I think it's not just the TV Plus stuff, but just an Apple original podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, selection. They mm-hmm. they launched the Oprah's Book Club uh, mm-hmm. on Apple Podcasts this week. So I think they're definitely ramping up to that stuff. And if they're going to announce the bundle, they're going to want to like, even if even if the podcasts aren't launched next year, I could easily say, look, we're going to have, you know, Apple Podcasts Plus. We're going to have Apple Fitness Plus. We're going to have, you know, four other things that you maybe want that we can all put into one big thing that you can buy. So, yeah, nice. yeah. Nice. like, I think it's uh, going to be good. I just, but that is on the assumption that next week event is more than just like the new iPad Air and a blood oxygen sensor in the watch. Like, yeah, I, we, we've I, we've certainly set our expectations. Um, reporting and, and Apple seems to have helped set the iPhone expectations that you won't have any. Um, but there's there's so much on the table for the next two months that it's just kind of a matter of like, uh, does it come or not? Versus like, which event will it be? Either way, it's it's so, it's so close together. Oh yeah, and the other thing I wanted to say. Remember, we already saw the. Uh, HomePod update get labeled as 14.1. Yeah. So, you know, the HomePod Mini 
probably coming later. Let's be realistic. So <laughs> and you that, kick that, off. that includes those features where uh, HomePod does sound recognition stuff, where it it can tell you who's at the front door with the HomeKit doorbell, and even like the the infinite playback feature from Apple Music. Yeah, and support for third party music services. Mm-hmm. So yeah. theoretically, if Spotify actually support the API, <laughs> then you can have uh, Spotify running natively on the HomePod, which would be neat. I bet Pandora will. They're like they'll do anything with an API. Yeah, I mean they were really quick off the mark with uh, Apple Watch streaming, right? Yeah. yeah so. Spotify complains about it. Pandora does it. Yeah. But nobody uses Pandora. Don't you feel like nobody uses Pandora these days? Well, I mean, they got they got bought by Sirius, right? And so you don't yeah, have to use them. They've they've got money behind. For them. a while though, like everyone was like, Pandora was the big thing. Like that, that was the internet. I mean, internet radio. <laughs> yeah, it was like Pandora. Everyone wants Pandora, and then you know Spotify kind of came along, and everyone was like, Oh yeah, we just kind of want to just pick what music we want to listen to. <laughs> yeah. And then they eventually matched what Spotify does, but it's too too samey and too late. So yeah. So if I had to guess, and I'm going to ask you as well, we're going to sure. have iPad Air, okay. Apple Watch Series 6, the 3S, or whatever they're going to call it, uh-huh. and then the fitness classes. Okay. That's what I think they're going to I'm going to go with uh, Apple Car, Project Titan, <laughs> um, Apple Glasses, because it's it's time flies, and why, <laughs> why not? Um, and then also, they did get the, the guy from Boeing several years ago, maybe like eight years ago. So now they're going to have the time flies in Apple Airplane. Those are my They've got the plane. they got yeah. the drones in the sky. Oh, Apple Rockets, too. They're going to take on, uh, like, like SpaceX, they're doing internet. Um, Amazon is doing internet stuff, so why not? You know, they're, yeah, they're doing like Apple, Apple satellite internet. It, just do it all. Like, yeah, the, do it all. That, they can put that, nowadays. They can do everything and just make it a subscription and put yeah. it as part of Apple One. Like, like Tim Cook says, it'll all fit on a table. Somehow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> especially when it's a subscription service. <laughs> that's like, right. like I think with Apple One, that's the question: is is that going to be a next week thing? Like, I feel like the fitness classes are so well synergized to Apple Watch that right, it's yeah. going to be a thing. Like, whether they're ready to be like. And, and that, here's and our that, entire bundle. And that pairs well with a with a, a watch that isn't the. I mean, th- this may not be the year that the watch is the big new thing. It's that the, the watch is a hit already. And if you're in the market for a watch, it just got better um, in terms of features and price. But that the big new thing is like, look at this thing that we you can do with it from Apple first party now. Um, and that can also kind of fill that void of like Watch OS Seven is kind of a snoozer. You know? Yeah, and it's I mean, like, we're really hoping again, f- crossing our fingers that whatever hardware's in the new watch will actually make like sleep tracking significant right like right yes because we talked about this when watch 7 came out like they they delayed sleep tracking for a long time and what currently exists in the betas is you know it does the job but it's nothing like extraordinary it seems very average considering the amount of investment they put into it acquiring a whole company like it just be very strange to me if the new watch comes out and obviously sleep tracking be a hero feature but more than what they actually offer in the current betas. Like it I feel like there has to be something special, like some secret source there that meant it was coming out, you know, way delayed compared to like every other everyone else. Because yeah. what they shipped what they shipped here is basically what like third parties third party apps are doing in like year one. Right. Like there was n- Not nothing today, pushing the one. boundary. Yeah. Yeah, literally year one. Like Yeah. I, I, this this week I brought back the nine to five Mac watch time podcast for season three. We're gonna do ten episodes and um from now through the new year. And Jeff Benjamin from 95 Max YouTube channel was was my first guest for season three, and we talked about that. It's like with, with sleep tracking and watchOS uh, seven on the Apple Watch, it, it doesn't replace what a Bedit sensor does. Like it's totally different league, you know. Um, it's it's so simple compared to what even what a Bedit sen- sensor can do. Um, and surely the end game isn't just for Apple to keep selling a mattress sensor for sleep tracking and the watch and and you know the phone mode and all that stuff. So. Please let that be some answers that we get next week. Otherwise, it's kind of a, a mystery as as to what took so long to get to where they are right now, which is not that advanced. And then how long will they keep selling about it? You know, or are they happy with what they've got in the watch now? So. Oh, and the other thing, the 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 the, the wireless charging mat thing, right? Like, what, what, what is it called? Well, the <laughs> new air power. The new air the power, new air power uh, is probably coming because we've seen like. Uh, software leaks and we saw that thing a couple of weeks ago where the iphone 12 has those magnets in it where it's going to like magnetically attach to it so that could be another product that's a september thing if they like have a if the if these charging pads meant to work with the watch as well as the phones then it could be next week or it could be october event right yeah. like, Wait, was there was there anything with um ipad mini before we head off for the week um that could be you know this we, we we're, we're feeling good about ipad air having this redesign like an i like an ipad Quo earlier this year said there was going to be an 8.9 inch iPad Mini. 
So that'd be an inch bigger than the current iPad mini screen size. Okay. Uh, he didn't specify a design. Okay. So and we're are, sh- are there screen changes that we expect too? With my- I forget the oh, the micro LED stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, he did say that, but the micro LED stuff keeps getting pushed back and, you know, it, it keeps going left, right, and center. So yeah, I don't. That was a whole pandemic ago, too. So. Yeah, that was that was pre pandemic stuff. And my personal belief in that is that's always going to come to like the iPad Pro line first. So, and we are expecting, a, you know, maybe not the, not before the end of 2020, but maybe like the first quarter of 2021, there'll be an iPad Pro refresh with A14X and maybe this new micro LED display stuff. So, or mini LED screens. So, I'd be surprised if the iPad Mini got it out of the blue, right? But maybe. I mean, I think it'd be nice if they do an iPad Mini update that makes it modern, right? With the thinner bezels and stuff. But that hasn't leaked yet, so I wouldn't bet the house on it. Yeah. All right. Any new iPods? <laughs> <laughs> the iPod Touch keeps on chugging. Yeah, it does. It remains a product in Apple's lineup. It remains a product in the lineup. The yeah. budget iPad... Um, maybe gets a spec bump to A14, but otherwise I just expected to carry on, right? Like I think it's yeah. perfectly suitable for what it for what it does. They don't need to change the hardware. Just bump the processor, give it an A14 chip, carry on with your life. Keep the price what it is, or get the price even lower if they can, because you know I think they're expecting the iPad to be very popular this year, just because so many people working at home and stuff. Yeah, that's true. All right, so the event is on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, that's on the 15th of September. We'll have coverage leading up to it. And all through the event, we'll be back here on Thursday, I guess it's the 17th, to talk about what happened. And 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 then soon after that, we'll kick it into like iPhone event speculation <laughs> just around the corner. The endless train. Endless train. All right. That is the Happy Hour podcast for this week. If you enjoyed this show, you can uh, share it with a friend. We really appreciate you doing that. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Apollo Zach. Benjamin, you're on Twitter at... BZA Mayo. And we will be back next week. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.